What's up? Welcome back, Green Country Custom Baits. I'm Jeff, going to be the host as usual. Uh, today we're going to do a pattern painting video, and we're going to paint. Let's see if that focuses in there good. We're going to paint the hickory shed. Uh, once we switch cameras, I'll give you a good shot of this. I'm gonna, we're going to talk about how I'm going to try to replicate this particular picture of an actual hickory shed. I'm interested in trying to paint something like this. Hang on tight after the intro, we're going to start spraying some paint. Okay, so we're about to do our, um, our hickory shed. I'm going to switch over to the the chesty camera. The reason I'm putting this on there, if you guys think this is a better angle uh, than some of my previous uh, videos, please give me some feedback. And, uh, you know, I've shot some different feedback or different angles with my GoPro set on the side, tilted up above. Anyway, um, appreciate any comments you leave. And please uh, hit that like button and subscribe button. Uh, we're trying to grow this thing and keep providing you some educational uh, content on how to how to paint baits and again we're going to do the hickory shed today so uh, we're going to switch over and uh, get our lights on and get ready to roll <clears throat> okay so for the hickory shed i want to give you a close-up i hope that glare isn't uh, let me turn a little bit this way yeah we still got a glare that's a little better um anyway this is what we're gonna we're gonna try to replicate and uh uh, you know, I don't know if you can tell real close, but it's got a dark back with a little bit of uh, kind of a bluish purple uh, in a scale pattern. We've got a little hint of uh, turquoise here. Of course, we've got uh, that shimmering blue and a little bit of some kind of iridescent uh, color that we're going to work to match it and, and get this pattern uh, as close to this as we can uh, with putting the scales up at the top. Uh, the little bit of black, uh, the shad dot that is almost splattered on in this particular pattern. A little bit of highlights there and a little bit of gold. So it's going to be a lot of colors in this particular pattern. Uh, we're going to be putting this pattern on the Strike King King Shads. We're going to do a couple of them. And uh, so hold on tight. We're going to get right out here and get the brush out and start loading up. We're going to go ahead and make this a... Uh, uh, not a transparent bait okay so it's we're going to go ahead and base coat it white uh if you would like to see a ghost hickory shed pattern please leave a comment in the bo box below i think that uh, it would be a very interesting pattern um to kind of match this so that may be something that comes in the future but again leave a leave some comments uh, appreciate the the information if that's something that you're you're looking for or would like to have in your particular body of water uh then by all means uh, we'll shoot one. Okay, so first up, we're just gonna we're gonna go with Wicked White. Um, it's a fairly opaque white uh, as a base coat. We'll speed this up so it doesn't bore you. Again, if you're using a heat gun instead of a hair dryer, I do it because I, I know it doesn't take very long. I've used it for quite some time, but you can overheat your plastics. Uh, it's just a real quick deal. Safest way is just use a, just, use a, a um, just an old hair dryer. But anyway, base coat's done. Next up, we're going to um, start getting in some of our detail colors underneath our blues and our and our pinks. Okay, so for the next two colors, again, we're going to work on this um, iridescent turquoise, which pretty much color matches that. And then we're going to go, and I'll show you those paints. Uh, and the next color we're going to shoot is uh, the uh, fluorescent raspberry. Okay, you could use a pink, um, either one of those. But uh, what I've got here is, again, fluorescent raspberry. 
equal parts with transparent base because I do want this color a little more transparent, uh, even though a fluorescent is fairly transparent. And I've also reduced it just a little bit with some Wicked Reducer. Uh, for the, uh, the bluish greenish color, we're gonna go with Iridescent Turquoise. And again, no base in this, just a little bit of Wicked Reducer so that I can spray it, spray it low pressure. And I'm not gonna need a lot of these colors uh, because we're gonna come back over the top of them with, with a, um, another pearlescent white. So anyway. We're going to put those away and we'll get to spraying. So again, if we look uh, at our pinks or our raspberry, okay, we have a little bit underlying in the gill plate and then that travels down into the belly uh, of this bait and we're going to continue that along with uh, a little in here and then down through the belly and just along that bottom edge. Okay, so we've got our brushes loaded up and we're ready to go. And increase the pressure with this raspberry. It just, I don't think I got it thinned like I want it, but okay. Again, raspberry just a little in the in the gill plate. Now we're shooting pretty good. up a little bit higher right behind that fin. Okay, for our turquoise, again, just a little bit straight under the eye. And then back behind the gill plate, uh, we're gonna start shooting uh, down those sides. Uh, well before the shoulder, some of the turquoise. Well, we got to get the right brush. It happens. Decrease the pressure. I'm going to go about 20. With this, it's fairly, been fairly thinned out. Working pressure, 20. A little light below the eye. And just right down that lateral line. Okay. Okay, to kind of tone those down and not make it look so uh, just opaque, I'm going to use my scale netting. Again, you can use them in a hoop or just place it over the bait and fasten it, but you do need it on there tight. Uh, and I've already got this in there. I'll show you on these jointed baits. I use a Q-tip on the back side so that it keeps that rigid while I push against it. Um, then we have just uh, loaded up some transparent white into our brush and I'm going to lightly spray over that and generally at a little bit of an angle, not that it makes that big a difference. So. Okay, a lot of contours in this bait, so. All right. 
that just kind of breaks it up, throws some scales on the bait, and we'll show you. And just to keep from marring it, I like Q-tips. And find wherever your joint is and stick it in there. Kind of press that against that. And then as you press, it keeps it tight. bills okay so there's our effect we'll still keep building on that but now we've got a few scales in place we've muted the uh, the blue and we'll continue to do that with some other with some other colors uh, because this particular pattern has got some real pearlescent silvers we could use uh, pearlized silver. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and do an aluminum base, uh, especially up at the top, uh, just to add that in as we go through. So we need a little bit of silver in it, and that should lay nicely over our already white scales. Okay. Okay, so we're going to use our aluminum base, and again, we're trying to get uh, some darker pigments of some silver uh, behind the eye, uh, just below that, or probably just above it, our lateral line. We'll do some scaling there, uh, and a little bit toward the belly, up toward the mouth. Okay, so we're going to use uh, this aluminum base by Auto Air. It's a real fine, it's the 4101. Okay, you gotta shoot fairly high pressure. We're gonna start at about 30. Make sure we get a good flow. And again, just below the eye, we got some silver under it. Working back. Also down toward the belly, just below that. Okay, same thing other side. Should have left my little Q-tip in there. A little bit of layering effects, and we'll come back with some scaling. over the top of that and get my Q-tip back in. What I do with my netting? God dang. Where in the hell did I set my net? Hung it back up. Okay, so we're just going to go tread a little bit lightly, but we're going to throw some of these aluminum scales in just above that. I don't want to make sure that was a little wet. A 
get out of there, golly. Excuse my fumbling and bumbling today. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting to get our layers built up. We got our pearl silver which is just right below. Next up, we're gonna do our, our dark color, um, which we're gonna go with a, a pearl black, wicked pearl black as our base for the top. Not shooting a lot of paint, just kind of laying it in there. And you can see it's a little grainy on the on the edges. Um, and I'm okay with that in this particular pattern because and you can see how there's a little black right above that eye. I'm gonna lay some black in that. Okay, quick heat set. And you can give you a close up of kind of what we've got here if, you, if the light's good. Okay, so we, and we're still got a few layers that we're gonna do over this just to kind of mute those, uh, those color effects there a little bit more, but we're going to go ahead and get the top done. Okay, for the top, we've picked a detailed violet. And we're going to scale that in using our scale mesh. And we just want to go over the top of that black, okay, with this violet. We don't want to get any of that down on our side, so... like that looks good just a little bit right in there okay reverse the bait I never this thing Jointed baits can be a pain. There we go. Now that'll come through nice when we've uh, when we've got our clear coat on. Okay, so we've got our back color done. It's gonna look real good once that clears on. Uh, we're just going to now, um, and I'm gonna tell you, these, these paints are tremendous, and I'll show you. I've got three different ones. If you don't wanna do some glitters, and you wanna add some sparkles, this Auto Air Hot Rod Sparkle Set, uh, this one's just got your silver sparkle in it, which is what I've put into this bottle. I also have one that's sparkle red, uh, it's got some red flake in it, and then I've got a sparkle blue. Uh, they do, I mean, they're just, they're awesome. They're very transparent, so it will mute this a little bit, but it'll add that, that silver sparkle, uh, just like these shads have, that really make it stand out and pop. So instead of having to add glitter, uh, I, I really like the, 
the hot rod sparkles. So we're just gonna cover our entire base with that, our entire pattern. And again, you've gotta, you, you've gotta thin this with uh, reducer 411. And don't go too heavy if you've reduced it, because it will run on you. And we'll do a couple of those. You're not gonna be able to see the effects probably on camera, but uh, it's just got some real ultra fine glitter contained in that hot rod sparkle white. So, you did it again. Two to three layers of this usually will be good. Add a little more of the spectrum. You can see that's that stuff's pretty thick, and it'll spray thick if you you know, especially through a five millimeter. We'll spray it a little thicker on this last coat. Yeah, it's already bogging up. I got it in a three point five. Have to increase the pressure. Build your, build it up. And this bait's going to have a lot of depth to it. And once we get that clear coat on, it's going to look really good. Hope I'm getting on well. Okay, really, 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 really got a lot of flash in it now. Uh, and again, you know, this is what we're after. We're trying to, I don't know how well you can see that. Let me get my iPad over here. Maybe it'll take some of that glare out. Uh, we just, lights creating problems, but. Okay, so really the only things left that, that we've got to do is, you know, I could come up in here and kind of mute that out, but I really like what we've got. We need to add our, our shed dots with, our, with some black. Um, and we may even do uh, a little bit of uh, some speckling up in here. You know, as you can see, it's got a little bit of splatter, uh, real fine splatter, uh, some black markings around the gill plate uh, and our kind of... Uh, it's not a, it's not a perfect circle, right? So our shad dot's going to look uh, a lot like that with feathered edges. Okay, we'll do that next. Transparent black. We've got our last thing. This is just a, you know, the Creatix line and their base base colors. Uh, we've reduced our pressure to twenty. We could go even lower. We're gonna put some details in around this gill plate and above it, and then we'll do our, our shed dot, so. Okay. 
I'll do the other side, then we'll do some speckle. And I'm just pulling the brush back, it leaves a very faded edge, okay? Much like that one. Okay, so in order to do our speckled look, we're gonna reduce our pressure down to, probably we'll go 10, 10 or 12, we'll try it here. Remove our end cap. We gotta have it working. The more pressure you give, the finer your dots. That looks good. Okay, so again, just a little bit around the back of the eye and at the top of the head. Uh, and around the mouth, we've got some, some speckles. And again, this is what I'm looking at here. Whoa, just this, this little bit of speckles around here. Got a few speckles uh, along the back uh, of the bait as well, so. around that shed dot and then just a couple place, places there. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's what we've added. Just a little bit right there doesn't take just a whole lot okay so that's what you can see we've added a little bit of the black markings the shed dot a little bit of black splatter using the stippling method removing the needle cap reduced our pressure to working pressures at about 12 okay to get that effect again with transparent black okay so I think we've got a pretty good representation of our picture. We'll shoot some good B-roll. It doesn't look like, I mean, we've just got too many glares from our fluorescent lighting, um, but we'll, we'll get, some, get the good camera out and we'll shoot some pictures of it after the clear coating. And uh, I really like it. That's our hickory shed pattern, okay? Thanks for tuning in. If uh, uh, you like this video, please hit the like button. Add comments if there's some other techniques that uh, some of you more experienced people out there would like to chime in, be great, adds to the channel, adds to the value of the channel. Uh, if there's another video that you'd like to see, please uh, uh, leave a comment about that as well and, and subscribe and share the video. Please share this video. You know, we've, we're just starting out. We're, we're, I'm an old fogey and don't know how to do all this keyword stuff, this, that, and the other in order to get this out there. I'd appreciate you guys if you'd share this video and and, and again, thanks for tuning in to Green Country Custom Baits. We're trying to teach some educational stuff here on lure art.